everyone welcome to pumpkin horror now today as I promised I do have a bunch of packages just coming in from um, Big Bad Toy Story this is one of them this is in fact the very first one which is most likely the trash zombie from the return of the living dead 1985 that is probably the mess that we're going to be looking at inside this box so what I'm going to do here is actually pull it out of the box and then we're going to take off with the video so I will be right back now here she is straight out of the box now I will tell you this it's a very cold morning when it got dropped off so the latex in itself is still very cold so we're going to let it go ahead and warm up and at the same time I got to spike up her hair because she was still fresh in her package as you can see the hair is all flat and so I got to spike it up so it looks just like what we see on the internet, okay? This is the Trash Zombie from the 1985 movie, The Return of the Living Dead, where Trash actually uh, mentions the fact that she likes to get uh, bitten by a bunch of old men. She's a little freak, okay? And then she gets up and actually takes off her clothes and does her dance. But soon after that, when the zombies are coming out, she gets her wish, okay? She gets bit by them and suddenly turns into this um, particular mask. So we're going to talk about this mask here in a little bit. But right now i got to spike up the hair and let it warm up a bit. And then we're going to go ahead and look at some of the details based on this mask. Okay? So I shall be right back. Okay, we're back. And we are inside the man cave where you can see all the masks in the background. When I did the initial video, when I first got it, it was out in the kitchen. But I brought it in here. And what I had to do was actually spike up the hair because when it first came in, it was sitting in a package. And the latex was cold because obviously it's, it's getting close to winter now. And it was cold so I had to let it warm up a bit. And then I finally fitted it with a styrofoam head. Um, the head itself is wrapped in plastic so keep this in mind. Uh, they say that styrofoam in itself can suck the moisture right out of your mask. There is this one YouTuber who did this with his mask. He didn't put no plastic on it. And he had the mask on the styrofoam head for a better part of uh, 10 years. And it literally was hard as a rock. It literally took all the moisture out of the mask. He couldn't even get it off the styrofoam head. So with this in mind, just keep in mind that you have to kind of wrap your uh, styrofoam heads so it doesn't destroy your masks, okay? Now there are certain YouTubers that kind of question that, okay? Um... Uh, I guess they would say it would happen to vinyl, but, you know, just better safe than sorry just to wrap your styrofoam heads. It's not going to hurt, all right? But anyway, I got it all done spiked up and stuff like that because the hair was completely flat when I pulled it out of the pa a package. Uh, the package is like a plastic bag it was in, but like I said, it was cold, so I had to let it warm up a little bit, and then I proceeded to spike up the hair a little bit. Okay, I might still do something with the hair, but you know, like I said, it's still fresh. Uh, but anyway, that's what she looks like, all spiked up. Now, some people, they would probably leave it flat, but when you actually see the actual two-second scene of her biting down on her first human victim, okay, she's all spiked out. So, yeah, you, you want to spike out your hair, okay? Well, this phone is going crazy right now, but anyway... um. What we're going to do here is kind of let you see what it looks like. And, and I'm going to pull the styrofoam head off of it. Maybe. I'm not positively sure yet. I might just leave it where it's at. But I want to give you some close-up shots of the mask. Now, you keep in mind, there's um, the color of the mask is not what I expected. But when you look on the internet, it's always different than what you expect. It's got like a bluish tint to the actual face. A light bluish tint with a little bit of gray it's not a bad color but I prefer almost a pure white in my opinion but that's just me but I'm not gonna mess with it it looks cool the way it is it'll grow on me eventually but I finally got my trash zombie mask okay like I said I do have the Mohawk zombie and I want to get the tar man I'm a little iffy about the skull the party skull that comes out of the ground then all of a sudden you hear um, the actual song, Do You Want a Party? But anyway, uh, that's a very cool scene. That's one of the best scenes in that movie. That movie is so classic in nature, it's ridiculous, okay? I totally loved that movie when it first came out. Fell in love with it. 
they have I think there's a total of four of them out or maybe five I'm not sure uh, the second one was pretty decent not as good as the first one the third one was pretty decent too but then it got stupid after that because they modernized the whole concept it didn't have that old return of the living dead feel it just you know it's one of those things but anyway those last two movies they were a little iffy especially ne necropolis i think it is towards the end you actually see two of the zombies that kind of look like borg they've been assimilated <laughs> But anyway, uh, they kind of got uh, a Borg feel to them, but they also got a Cenobite feel to them because they got contraptions on their hands and stuff like that. Uh, they went all kind of stupid on that. But anyway, I love the franchise in itself, but the first three movies are the ones that I feel are the return of the living dead, especially the first one. There's a lot of cool elements that come out of the first movie. Like I said, the, uh, the poster uh, art version of the Mohawk Zombie trash obviously tar man is another cool feature about it they do have a tar man in the second movie but he's not as cool as the first one okay anyway so let's just go ahead let me move that in a little bit we're going to get a close-up look of this mask here all right i grab this without messing up the hair too much okay now here we go i'm going to show you the mouth the mouth is it's quite bloody okay it's got a little blood splatterings on the lips here okay and up on the top all right but she is now you, you notice the color is a little bluish tint to it or a grayish tint i would have preferred it to be pure white i think it would have really looked good with a little bit of gray tones but it's not bad you know, i'm not gonna complain the ear okay got to spike that hair out a little bit. I don't like it laying on the face like so. Okay, there we go. And I still got the tag on it. Now, when it comes to the mask, I don't plan on selling these for any given reason. So I pull the tags off. But that's the tag. Again, you see the poster. That's the Mohawk Zombie right here where my thumb's at. And i like to see them do a mask on this one here. Maybe further down the line they might. You never know. Okay, and obviously you got your directions on how to take care of your mask, okay? Trick or Treat Studios, okay? But anyway, the ears, okay? You want to spike this out a little bit? Yeah, it's important that you spike out your, uh, your, your trash zombie mask. Because she looks cool, okay? And I mean, I still got to fluff it out a little bit just to give it that nice look, all right? But anyway, this is what she looks like in the back. The hair is like a clown type hair. Right. Again, it requires some spiking. Now the actual thickness of this mask, it's not bad, as you can see here. It's a decent uh, thickness. But like I said, when it's cold, it's not recommended you try to throw this on your face yet until it warms up. Now it's pretty much warm. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually, I'm going to wear the mask. Okay, I'm going to see if it actually fits my head. Because it's always important when you do these kind of reviews and stuff, that if it don't fit someone's head, like my big head, then it's good to know that, okay? But anyway, this is the trash zombie. Okay? The eyes are wide open, so you'll be able to see out of it, no problem. So what I'm going to do, put her down... Okay, and I'll be right back because I'm going to wear the mask, okay? All right, be back in a second. Oh, yeah. This is what it looks like, guys. It is a little tight on my face because I got a big head. And as you can see, the mask is kind of moving up and down. <laughs> but it's not bad if you want to wear it. If you have a smaller head, it would fit perfect. But as you can see, it is a very cool looking mask. All right, uh, that's what she looks like, guys. Now I actually did this uh, wearing the mask in the room, but it was too damn dark, so I had to start all over, guys. Okay, but this is what it looks like. All right. Anyway, this is Pumpkin Horror. I hope you guys like this mask and got a better understanding of it. All right, guys, this is what it looks like on my head. Now, like I said, I got a big head. 
All right, so it's really tight on the front part of the face, as you can see. It does move up and down because from this point to this point is a little tight, okay? It is a smaller mask, but if you have a smaller head, it'll actually work out pretty good. You know what I'm saying? But, oh yeah! <laughs> Anyway, it is a tight fit. It is hard on the ears if you have a big head. You just got to kind of adjust it and pull the mask out a little bit, and then it's comfortable. But front-wise, to the back, it is tight. It depends on the sh shape of your head. It might work out good. It might not. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, this is Pumpkin Horror. You guys have yourselves a good day. Okay, bye.